why you are emotionally unsafe with your own family. For the longest time, I didn't know that I was emotionally unsafe with my own family. I knew something was up. I knew something didn't feel right. I actually didn't feel safe to share my feelings, to share failures, to make mistakes. But I didn't know that it was because emotionally there wasn't that space. It wasn't a safe space to express myself, to be emotional, vulnerable, sensitive, and just fully seen or even exposed in terms of like failing, flaws. That is something that was not tolerated in my family. That is something that my mother did not tolerate. Now, this is not something that was, this is always just hard for me to explain. It wasn't something that was so explicitly seen that it wasn't an emotionally safe space. It wasn't as explicit as you would think it is. It wasn't my mother saying, don't share your feelings or um, stop being a crybaby. It wasn't as explicit as that, which I think is why it took me forever to realize that. And I thank the Lord, honestly, because he has just revealed this to me. I think I would still just be be confused. I'd still be empty. I'd still be be anxious. And I'm still dealing with those things. But I just didn't know before what was the root, what was the cause. But being guided by the Lord and trusting him, he has revealed this to me. That I grew up in an emotionally unsafe space. Some of the things that my mother would say though were things like if something is going on in my life or um, one of my siblings life she would say don't react in a certain way or um, don't worry or stress yourself or something along those lines because it's gonna make her stressed or it's gonna hurt her so whatever I would be going through or whatever my siblings would be going through it would be more about how it's gonna hurt her so you had to manage your emotions or your reactions or how you are handling and dealing with the situation because in as much as the situation is yours it's hurting you it's happening to you you had to consider her feelings as if the situation was hers. And her reasoning was always that she's the mother and whatever hurts us obviously hurts her. And that's true to a certain extent for most parents because obviously most parents do love their kids and whatever happens in their kids' lives they obviously also going to be affected by that. But it doesn't take away from the fact that whatever the experience is, it is still the child's experience. Whatever bad experiences or failures or whatever hurtful experiences that I experienced or that my siblings experienced, it was still ours. It was still us who were dealing with that and... During that time, we also had to consider our mother's feelings because there is no way we could be possibly hurting more than her. Even though whatever was hurting, it was hurting us. It was happening to us. And I never understood that because even with her, loving my mother, whenever she faced a situation, obviously I would also be affected because I know that There's something that's bothering my mother or it's hurting my mother or there's just this uncomfortable circumstance. Obviously, I would also be hurt or just, you know, be affected by that. But it would never be about me because I understood that she's the one facing that. 
I could never be in a position where I'm saying, oh, don't stress about this or don't complain about this or don't show your emotions because, by the way, she never said don't show your emotions. But the way she would say it and how she would make you feel, it was actually indirectly saying that. Again, this is, this is something that happens in a very subtle manner. But even as a kid, when something would happen to my mother, in as much as I was affected, I would feel sad for her, with her. I knew it wasn't, it wasn't my situation. I could never feel as much pain as she, would, as she was feeling regarding whatever she was going through. But when it came to her children, she wanted the opposite. She wanted us to understand that what's hurting us, what's happening to us, is hurting her more. Which was always confusing to me because, but it's not happening to you. It's happening to me. I understand that as a parent, you are affected. You supposedly love me. And I say supposedly because I'm questioning a lot of things right now. But. That's like an episode for another time. But why are you affected so much so that I have to put my pain aside, me the one going through the thing, and think about you? How does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense. I was a kid. Uh, my mind was underdeveloped, but it didn't make sense then. And now it's even more clear that yeah, that definitely didn't make sense. And so it would be those kind of things. And still is. It still is. Just that the difference now is that we've grown up and we can, we try to stand up for ourselves. It's not easy because technically my mother is an emotional abuser. And I've sympathized with her all my life from, you know, thinking, knowing the kind of childhood she had. But now I see that it, it was all just a justification for her treating us the way she, she did and the way that she still does. And, and having a horrible childhood or a traumatic and as far as I know about my mother, the only traumatic, maybe there are other things she has never shared, the most traumatic thing was that her mother died at a very young age. She was still young and left with her siblings. They fought to have a home. Things like that. That's a hard childhood. That would obviously scar a lot of people that would obviously live some scars and and just a lot of issues and so for the longest time that story was the justification in my mind as to oh yeah she just had like a terrible childhood so that's why she's the way she is and I also think that's the that's the story she kind of pushed on us so that we would always sympathize with her and we wouldn't really see or, or, or like notice how, how she was really treating us. And now I just don't think that it justifies being emotionally abusive to other people because we are all responsible as I've started learning we are all responsible for how, for who we become. Traumatic things unfortunately happen. Experiences that change us, that scar us, they happen. It's part of life. It's sad, it's unfortunate, but it's part of life. I love this quote that I once saw on Instagram. It says, it's not your fault, but it's now your responsibility. It's not your fault it's not my fault it's not anyone's fault for having a traumatic childhood or experience it's not anyone's fault for having a bad experience whether that's in a romantic relationship 
family relationships, whatever the case may be, it's not your fault. But it's now your responsibility to be better, do better. And my mother has not taken that responsibility. She has zero accountability. She doesn't, I don't even know whether to say she doesn't know how or she's not willing to. And so growing up in an unsafe, emotionally unsafe environment left a ton of issues and scars in me. And I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm upset. I don't even know how to be with my family right now at this point. I am finding it very challenging to be living with my family at this stage where I am discovering and uncovering so many things about my childhood because I'm so angry, I'm so upset at the fact that I never had an emotionally safe environment. I had a safe environment physically. My mother made sure we always had a roof over our heads, a plate on our table, clothes on our backs. She did that. And I will be forever grateful for that. Because other people didn't have that. Other children didn't have that. But it doesn't take away from the fact that I also needed emotional care. I also needed a mother who cared, who saw me, who put my emotions first as the child. I'm the child. For the, lot of, for the longest time, I'm even getting angry as I'm speaking. For the longest time, I put my mother first as if she is the child. I was the child. We were the children. It, it It's not right for a child because I often felt like I was the mother. Not only to my mother, but to my siblings. Because she gave me that position and my siblings just went with it. So I had to take this motherly position, but I was a child. I was the one who was supposed to be put first, my emotions. I was the one who was supposed to be taken care of. And sure, I can reason all day that she also had a lot on her plate, a lot on her mind. But till this day, nothing has changed. So for me, that doesn't justify it anymore. It just doesn't cut it. Maybe there were seasons... Maybe there were seasons, maybe there were times, maybe there were years where, yes, a lot was on her mind. Yes, she was also stressed and frustrated about certain things that she didn't pay attention to the fact that her children needed her emotionally. But really, decades, decades later, we are still facing the same issue. No, that doesn't justify it. It just means it's who she is. And she hasn't taken the responsibility to become a better person regardless of her childhood, regardless of her traumatic experiences. There are people who have gone through the most terrible things ever, who have had the most traumatic childhood experiences, but they became better people because they took the responsibility. Why should other people suffer for what they didn't even do to you? It's understandable that you might still have hurt, bitterness, anger, totally understandable. But why should everybody else who who did nothing to you, why should they suffer for that? That's why it becomes your responsibility to be better. And my mother did not make that choice and hasn't made that choice and it looks like she will never make that choice which makes it increasingly hard for me to be around her at this point I'm really wishing that I could just be somewhere else go somewhere else I wish my circumstances were different so that I could get my own place and and I almost even wish that I lived so far away, even overseas. 
because I'm scarred, I'm wounded. And I'm praying, I'm praying because as the Lord has revealed this to me, I'm praying for healing. I'm praying for healing. A a prophet once said, I don't know if this is in the Bible, but a prophet once said that the Lord reveals to heal. I'm trusting that the Lord has revealed this to me because it's almost as if I was blind to how emotionally abused I was because maybe I needed to be blind, because maybe I needed to not fully see it because maybe it would have crushed me maybe I wouldn't have been able to process it but now as a young adult I think maybe I am better at processing and digesting this even though it is so painful so heartbreaking so upsetting but I think the Lord shielded me from fully realizing what was happening and how emotionally abusive my mother was and still is And so I am praying for healing. Those words, they keep playing in my head that the Lord reveals to heal. And I'm praying that over my life that the Lord heals me, heals the pain. It's almost like if someone punches you, punches you like they punched you years ago. And then years later, you feel the pain. That's how I'm feeling. Like someone punched me years ago. But now the pain is just, it's hitting right now. What makes it worse is that the person who punched me years ago hasn't necessarily stopped punching me. Maybe, maybe now they're just doing so it's differently. They're doing it differently. They're still taking jabs at me. And now it's just all resurfacing. It's all coming up and it's all hurtful. It's all painful. And it hurts that I can't even talk to anyone about this. Not other family members, not even friends, not people at church. Nobody, because I know no one would understand. Because you just have to respect your mother, right? Even though an emotional abuse is a hard thing to to describe to talk about especially if it is subtle like the way it was for me and my siblings because it's not like my mother was just screaming at us every day telling us that we're stupid that we're never gonna make it in life it wasn't that that is what frustrates me that it is it is the most oh my word I don't even know the word for it because it was so subtle but you felt it and and the results they show. I see it in my other siblings. I see it in myself. The results, they are evident. She might have not said the most worst thing to us, but the results they show. How we've become, the anxiety that we have to deal with. The insecurities, low self-esteem, we we don't trust ourselves, we feel like we're not good enough. It shows how emotionally abused we were. And so that's a hard thing to explain to someone else. It's hard to explain to to people who always just want to put a mother on this high position and high standard that your mother loves you. They could never do something like that. It's more understandable if your mother was physically abusive because then, yeah, that makes sense. That's abuse. Like everybody just understands that. But if it's emotional abuse and a lot of black families don't talk about this, don't talk about the emotional abuse, especially from mothers, because fathers, they already, they already seen as like the bad guy. So for fathers, like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, a father, most fathers and most black families, they're not even around. They don't even take care of their children. So it's kind of expected that mm, you're not going to do so well, especially in the emotional stuff. Or maybe you're going to abuse your child physically, or maybe you're just not going to be present. But nobody really talks about the mothers who are there because I was raised by a single mother. And I always thought of her as my hero. 
because I was still blinded at that time. I was still shielded by God to not see the pain she had inflicted on me. Is it inflicted? I think it's inflicted. But I couldn't see. I couldn't see the pain. I couldn't see the damage. I I felt it. I knew something wasn't right. But I I believe God was shielding me. That's why I couldn't put my finger on it. Even though I, I would feel, I would sense, I carried it with me that something wasn't right. But God shielded me. And at this stage, it's just all unraveling and I am angry. I am upset. I I have I have had so many issues, mental issues, depression, anxiety, you name it. And it's and the root is my mother who never took the time to deal with her own issues, never took the responsibility. And I can't even I can't even I don't wanna excuse it. I don't wanna say but no one was there to show her the way because that's true. That also played a part into her not taking accountability, not changing. That is true. But we are talking about decades. Decades. We just have to point out when somebody is just not willing to change. I can make all the excuses for my mother. We can sit here and make all the excuses for our mothers, their childhood, the romantic relationship, our, their relationship with the father, how things just didn't work out for them, how their dreams didn't come true. I sympathize with that. I sympathized with that for the longest time. It was the reason that my mother got away with all that she has done because I sympathized with that. But it's it's no longer... It doesn't cut it for me anymore. It just doesn't cut it anymore because my mother is still making a daily choice to be how she is, to be the emotional abuser that she is. So no, I I, I don't sympathize as much anymore. I sympathize to a certain extent because I understand that she did have it rough. Maybe certain things didn't work out the way that she had hoped. Maybe certain experiences also scarred her. I sympathize to a certain extent, but n- not fully. Not fully because here I am with the issues that she has caused in my life. And I'm taking responsibility because I don't want the people around me to to face or or be part of what I'm going through or what I went through when they were not even there when I was going through it. I don't want people to to suffer because of what I went through. Here I am at my age. I'm taking responsibility. Other people have taken responsibility with their lives. They are rape victims. Victims of abusive parents or partners who have become better people with that much pain and trauma. They have tried, they've went for counseling, they've, they've, they've sought help. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they are letting him lead them. And we are talking about a woman who is saved here, my mother, a Christian woman. Who is not taking the decision, who is not praying about it. Because you, you know when, let's say for instance, you're jealous of somebody. And you know, like, you shouldn't be feeling that way. It's normal to feel that way. It's normal to be envious, to be jealous, to be angry, to be bitter, resentful. It is normal. But how do we act when we feel those things? Especially as believers, we take it to the Lord. Lord, I am envious of that. You know, today I felt feelings that that were not right. I felt them. It happened. We don't control that. Sometimes it just... It happens to us. We don't always get to control that. Sometimes the feelings, they just drop on you. The anger, the bitterness, the jealousy, it drops on you. But what do you do about it? Do you just stay there? Because, hey, certain things happen in my life. So I can just be bitter and angry and mean to other people and rude to other people because I had a traumatic experience. So that justifies it. So it's fine. I can be as rude as I want to be. 
it's not fine it's not fair it's not right it's not right for me it's not right for anyone it's not right for my mother it's not right and i refuse to take it anymore i refuse to tolerate it anymore all in the name of respecting my mother hear me clearly i will continue to respect my mother and i'm praying over this i'm praying over this because i'm still so hurt i will continue to respect my mother but i don't have to tolerate all of that anymore i don't have to tolerate and stand for her abuse i don't have to stand for it because somehow we think respect is synonymous with doing whatever the person wants or letting them get get away with doing whatever they want to us that's not respect that's being a doormat and i've been a doormat for my mother for the longest time and we just need to get to a place where we understand what respect is and when we understand that implement that even though the other people might not see it as respect anyway i am just i'm tired i'm tired of being emotionally abused <laughs>